Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle and welcome to Chasing Legends. Welcome back, I'm Wayne Tuttle. I'll be your host today for Chasing Legends. Uh, get a chance, hit subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see what we're up to and when we have new videos posted. And get on over to our bout section, pick up a t-shirt. We have the Legend of Superstition Mountains and the Dutch Hunter Rendezvous in gray and black, short sleeve and long sleeve. That all being done and out of the way, we're gonna turn back and we're actually gonna jump into an episode here. Um, we wanted to cover some stuff on episodes, but this is going to be something an, within an episode. Um, we were doing the sixth episode, and we were doing the filming back in what's called um, Crucifix Canyon. And we're going to, and, and it's not known by that because of the cross we saw from the Salt River. It's actually known by that because there's another cross back up into the canyon. So and it has nothing to do with the Bat Cave cross or the natural cross at the opening of the canyon. So just so everyone understands on that, on the name, and where it got its name. Um, we went to go in there to film. Um, Eric Magnuson, every time we'd go out, would bring all his metal detectors, and there'd be two or three of these things, and he'd be carrying them in his hands. When we went to work our way up in there, and for the few people that have ever been up in that canyon, it's house-sized boulder type stuff. And you have to work your way between the boulders and work your way up the canyon. So there's a lot of spots. There's five, ten, five feet, eight foot, ten foot little increments you got to work through. And at that time of the year, we were in the monsoon. It was we, it, late monsoon came in. It was September, probably late September for us right then. And we were getting a bit of rain off and on. So everything had filled up these catch holes, um, catch pools up in there. Well, as we're working our way up, the last one we hit, we, we were wet up to our knees just going in. Um, we got up to this one where literally it was up probably about four or five inches above our waist. So we're soaking wet and you're having to take all your gear and hold it up in the air and kind of get yourself through it and hand it up to someone else and then get yourself up out of this thing. And, and the water's all pretty cold at this point. Well, Magnuson got through that and we realized there was this huge problem that was happening. And that was, well, every time we get to one of these spots, we got to stop. We got to get Mag Magnuson has to go through. He has to hand the equipment up. We got to hold the equipment. Magnuson has to come out. Then he has to pick up the equipment. We got to start moving again. And we had basically a day we're trying to film the sequence in up that canyon, up to the, um, the Guano Cave and all that. And it's just not going to work, man. We're, we're, we're taking forever, prolonged. So we got up through that one, and I, I, I can picture it was a very deep like hole that was held with water, and like I said, it was above our waist. And you climbed up out of that, and then there was a little bit of a, a turn, and in the turn, there was boulders stacked up, and there was a niche, you know, probably went back three, four feet, and it was probably about two and a half feet tall, and it was back up under the boulders like a cubby hole. And everybody was like, you know, kind of like, man, we're just going to take forever with magazines. So it was like, let's put all his equipment in here so he doesn't have to carry it. There was no reason for him. We, we didn't understand why he was carrying it in the first place. So it was like, why don't you stick all your gear in here and then you'll have your hands free and we can continue on. Now, I don't know if you're watching it during the filming sequence, if it shows him he has the gear and then it shows him without the gear. It could be there. It's hard. I just remember he had all the gear and then we stash it in there. And he was like, and we're thinking, we're the only people in the canyon. We have the boats and the production crew down at the base. Woody and Frank were down there. And then you have everybody that's trailing along. And then the, the lead production group that's doing the filming up ahead. So there should be no problem with any of this. Because we have people on either side and everybody around it. We'll be coming back through the same area at the end of the day. Because that's where our point of departure will be to get back to the mainland. So we work our way up and there's, you know, there's, a, there, there's easily an hour's worth of stuff of what happens along the way there. Plenty of drama, plenty of crap. Um, anyhow, when we finish, as everybody remembers, we're going up and if you're watching the one segment, there was a piece where there was a, 
there was a piece of log and then there was a crack and we were climbing up through it and I got up, climbed up, got my way up to the top and I helped the cameraman up and then they filmed over my shoulder and I had to help Delil and Magnuson up. And Magnuson struggled, I don't remember if it was the wood broke or what happened, but I was wedging myself and reaching down and trying to pull the weight up. And Magnuson lost all his footing or whatever and was just suddenly became dead weight as I'm trying to drag him up. And of course the cameraman, nobody's gonna interfere with it because we're filming the show. So I'm trying to drag him up through there and I don't know how much of they, all they caught. Well, my left foot, I had put in the crack and when Magnuson comes up, I tweak and my leg, of course, my body bends, but my lower part of my, my left leg doesn't bend because it's stuck in the crack with them stupid hiking boots. So I completely jerk out my knee. Um, I kind of felt it, but I, you know, at, at the moment, it's, we were cold, we were wet. I didn't think much of it, got him out. I, Pretty sure Delil had already gotten up, so once we're all up there and we start moving on from there, we're walking along, and I forget I have a live mic. You always forget that because you're talking to someone, and we were walking along, and I turned to Magnuson, and I said, man, my knee's jacked, man. My knee's just history. And he's like, what's up? I said, I, I, I tweaked it back there. And I could feel it already just burning and swelling and starting to lock up on me. And I realized, wow, I, I only got so much time before the knee is going to be useless. So we're working our way up, and everyone's kind of heard that story. Um, the next point was a bit ways down. And they stopped, and they said, well, what should we do about it? And I said, you know, just let's keep going, because if we stop today, we can't come back, because my knee is going to take a couple, at least a couple days before it probably feel, if that. So I thought, long as we're at where we're at, just let's go, you know, it, it bothers me. But let's just continue to move forward. So we moved forward and we got to where we were down to the wash below the guano cave and we're getting ready to split off in two directions. And the camera crew is kind of down below in the wash. And there was a way I saw as working our way kind of, I would think that would be southeast and then work our way across and over. And the, the footing was much better. It wasn't just, you know, earth and stuff. It was more boulder. So I thought we'd be better off on solid ground with the rain and stuff. So I started walking up that way and I said, let's just come up this way and work our way around. And the director, no, the producer said at that time, I was like, no, 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 no. What I want to do is I want to come down here and I want to go up this way. And I'm thinking it's loose, soft dirt. My knee's killing me. Uh, um, it's going to be like walking in sand. This, this is not what I want. It's just going to be, it, it, it's wet. It's, and, I, and, all I, and I'm like, no, 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 let's just go this way. He's like, no, we got to come back around. So I turned to say something. And the knee, of course, gives way because I put all my weight on my left foot on this wet rock, on this slope, and I turn and I'm just like, I'm pretty pissed off at that point. And then I just, the leg gives out, so I tumble back. And it's about probably five, six, seven feet, I drop. And I got lucky, I pulled my head up and I slammed down into this boulder behind me and knocked the wind out of me. And I got my hand, tried to get my hand around behind me because I knew there was a boulder behind me and it was kind of a dumb move, but I ended up jacking my left hand up pretty bad too because I got it twisted underneath me and I came down on top of it on the boulder. So I'm lucky I didn't break my arm either. That happens, I sit up and I put my hat back on and I remember I'm just sitting there and they have an EMT and Magnuson runs over as well and they're like, uh, oh. and the EMT says, we're gonna have to call the shoot because they were worried I smacked my head and my left hand's got blood running down it and I'm looking at it and I took some water and I washed it off and I knew my hand was gonna obviously not work as well but it didn't matter and my knee hurts and they keep telling us no we want to go this way we want to do this let's do this and it's stuff that you don't want to do because it puts you at risk twisting legs and doing this very stuff we've done Funny thing is, if I'd been wearing my high tops outside of those stupid hiking boots, I probably would not have twisted my left leg in the first place or slipped off that rock. My footing, everything would have been completely different. But because I'm wearing them big old stupid hiking boots that everybody has to wear when they're out because it's kind of like, it's kind of like, I guess if you wear a plaid 
um, flannel shirt, you're a lumberjack, but whatever. History Channel says, no, you have to wear the boots. Well, that was in both instances what was caused my injuries. So I get down and then they're like, we got to call off the shoot. I'm like, well, we're not coming out tomorrow, obviously. So this means we're supposed to be wrapping up and we knew we just had a couple more days of filming to do. And we're like, you know, this really sucks. Because not only we got to go back, now we got to spend two more days and I got to wait till it's okay. And, and they're probably going to want to come out before I'm ready. So I'm going to have to come out on the bad leg and we're going to have to rethink what we're doing and reshoot stuff because of it. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And they're trying to put a waiver in front of me, you know, sign this, you know, because they don't want to be responsible. Anyways, the sub nation, and this is not really what the story's about. Remember, the, the metal detectors are hidden away. But anyways, I just basically walked off. And Magnuson and Delille looked over at me and started following me. And Glenn Evans, um, awesome guy, <laughs> realized what we were doing because I just said a couple of expletives, and I decided I'm going up the hill because if that's what we're supposed to do, we're just going to do it today because I'm, I'm pretty much over this. And then next thing I hear is behind me because we probably walked for about 10 minutes up that hill. And then I hear somebody, oh, where's Wade? And uh, he's going up the hill. Oh, crap. And then they all start coming up the hill behind us because it's the three of us with just Glenn, the one cameraman, toofing it up the hill. Um, which I basically just turned my body sideways and tried to keep my right foot out to the outside and this soft dirt, which really sucked, and work my way up and zigzag up that hill, which took forever, but we did get it. And you'd see, if you watch it, you'll see that the guys are a little bit ahead of me and then they're behind me and we kept, because we had, I had to pick out the route and pick out the way I was gonna walk. Anyways, all this happens when we finish that whole sequence. We're done for the day. Um, it was late in the afternoon. The sun's going to be going do down. I had to tell them we got to get out of here. The bats are going to be coming out of there. We can't be having people up there and all this stuff going on. We need to get out of the area. So literally the entire production team, Magnus and Delil and all, pick everything up, grab the gear, and down the hill they go. And I'm sitting there realizing, oh, they forgot I can't move very well. Because going down it was kind of the ladder thing is what I told them is I would have climbed the ladder, but I don't know how well I could have got down off the ladder because of my leg. Well, the same aspect is going downhill is it was a lot more difficult going down with that leg, bum knee than it was going up. So Jesse Hayes, who was, um, I believe he was a, um, the DA, the director's assistant on this. Jesse Hayes stayed with me. And I told him, don't miss the boat. And he says, well, the boat's got to wait for both of us, okay? So Jesse stayed behind. Um, I told him, don't stay too close in front of me. If I tumble, just stay out of the way. Because one, we don't need to be both taken out by it and nobody gets help. So you can always run down and get help. But I said, just keep 10, 20 feet in front of me to the side and I'll work my way down. So we came all the way down this hill, we get down in the wash, and we're working our way. The guys are long gone. They're on the boat. They're changing clothes, doing whatever they're doing, wondering where we're at. We're just creeping along because, as obviously, standing around, filming and all that, not going down. My, my leg was just trashed. I could barely move. So it was just little by little by little by little and going down and through these boulders. And there was a couple spots we had to jump down or slide down. And it was grueling because I was literally just, I actually was a little scared because I was having to come down on my right leg primarily. So I was having to always put all the weight there and I kept thinking if my ankle or anything, then I'm, then I'm even worse shape. But we're coming down and I remember hitting that spot where remember I was talking about where we put the metal detectors. And I remember going by and it, I looked over and there was nothing in there. And I looked over and said, okay, they grabbed everything. Because that was always, I thought, as we got out of place and stuff, make sure gear, our gear was picked up and our stuff, and we loaded up and got everybody out safe. So I was, I was the last man out. We are coming through. I remember looking over, making sure as we hit that spot, as it wasn't there. Because I wasn't looking forward to it because I was going to have to drop into that cold water, and I was going to have to climb back out of it and all that. And I realized my, my day has just begun because once I get in, I got all this clothes. I'm going to be out, all the guanos on everything. My rifle and my pistol, everything is just soaked. So I got a lot of cleaning and oiling and a lot of stuff to do tonight. So I wasn't looking forward to even, and I, I still had to drive all the guys back because I drove all of us, the talent, back and forth on sets and stuff. 
So I realized everything was gonna have to happen. So we get down, I remember the last drop was about an eight, nine foot drop off this boulder edge. There no, was no really other way around it. So we basically, um, Jesse got down, I tossed him all my gear, and then I just kind of basically did a drop and try to drop and roll just to kind of keep the weight off and not do any more damage to my left leg. So we got there, got in the boat, got my gear out, and, and the other thing is we had to wade out waist deep to the boat, get the gear in, and then get us up into the boat and go off. So we get in the boat and Magnuson said something about his metal detecting stuff. And I remember Jesse or someone said something and, and whatever the talk was and it was, it's on the other boat. And I, I told him, yeah, because I knew it wasn't there. I went by, it wasn't, there was nothing there. And then this is where this whole mystery comes out of because one of the big things that overshadowed us is after the show even had actually aired, Magnuson was still trying to get the insurance money because the metal detective equipment did not show up on any of the boats at the dock, supposedly. It's a complete mystery, isn't it? It's like we're all out there, it's just this production team and us, and we get out, we get back to the dock, and we're like, the equipment's missing. And Magnuson went through everything, it's not there. And there was, I think they were all mine lab, there could, might have been something else, and he could always chime in on one of these and say what it exactly was but I was pretty sure it was at least three metal detectors so and it's thousands of dollars worth of gear and we're all like what and then they wouldn't let us go back out because it's nightfall and all this stuff and there was actually a storm coming in and a big you know big to do big storm came in that night so we had to get in and I remember there's a lot of lot to do because we got back to my truck and I basically made Delil and Magnus and stripped down and we got down to our underwear and drove back to the hotel in our underwear with all our dirty clothes in the back of the truck because of all the guano and everything that was coming off of us. I wanted us cleaned off. It was cold, it, but once you get in the truck, you turn on the heater, regardless of the optics of this, it was much better than if we would have been in there with Woody and Frank and smelling and all the crap that would have got in my truck. So we got back and supposedly the next day they sent someone out to check the area and they said, oh, the whole area washed out and they must have been on the beachfront and someone left them laying there and they washed out and all these stories came out about it. And, and, and the mystery is it took Magnuson forever to get the insurance money. And, and I always kind of felt for him a little on it, but the mystery is I know they weren't in the hole and they said they never picked them up. Secondly, later we heard someone actually sold one of them to a pawn shop. So one of them did turn up somewhere, not sure who or what or when, and we were told the next day that we did OTFs all day because of my leg. So they propped me up, said, okay, we're gonna do you know the interviews all day. So I sat there and did interviews all day to cover the entire season. And I kept asking, you know, where, you know, what are we going to do about Magnus? Oh, we sent someone back. We sent someone back. We sent someone back. We kept being told that, but Frank and I, all these years, have thought about everyone was there that day. And we can't remember anyone from the production team missing that could have went back and got it, because it would have taken a couple people to go back, get the boat, go all the way back in there, go, you know, wouldn't have sent one guy. But I remember everyone from the crew being there working. I remember, you know, Christian Horn, I remember Russell was there, and I remember Brody, I, I remember all these guys. And I'm like, well, who did they send? Because everyone was there, Dan Carter was there. And, and Frank agreed, he suddenly realized, yeah, if they sent someone back and they took half that day to go get it, how come they were all there with us all day? So imagine there, what happened to those metal detectors? Now, I'm not gonna ca cast aspirations towards Magnuson, because he was very, very visibly upset and wanted to go back and then the next day and then he was pretty bummed because that stuff he had all kind of got for the show. And then of course, God, this is, that occurred in September and I remember Magnuson talking to me in May and June the next year and they still hadn't settled up or worked out the insurance deal. And all I can tell you, and I, I, I know I let him know, and I've, to be and Frank have talked about it a lot, the great mystery of the metal detectors that were there. We came back through, they were missing, they were gone. We got on the boat, we came back, and then they were never heard from again. So um, kind of one of those weird kind of things that something happened there. 
And, and I heard so many stories. They washed out and they found parts down in the, you know, down in the, um, the lake. And then there was another one that, you know, one shows up at the pawn shop. Then another one is someone snuck back in there that night during the storm and got it. We heard five, ten different stories of what happened to those metal detectors. But as uh, far as I know, I've never seen any proof of anything. I just know when we Jesse and I came back through, they were gone. When we hit the, the beat, what you would call the beachfront of the cove there, there was nothing laying anywhere out. Um, we double checked, looked around, and we made sure and all my gear got on. So those things got on a boat. And there were three boats. There was the two, um, two little power boats, and then there was a pontoon boat. And everything got on the boats, and everything left. And so far as I know, those things made it back to the dock and somehow mysteriously managed to vanish. So that's the mystery of the um, missing metal detectors. Um, hope you enjoyed that. That was actually, you know, kind of an interesting thing. I don't think we've ever talked about it because we always kind of worried about getting someone in trouble for it. But someone should have been because that, that was kind of wrong, whatever happened with all that. But that was it. Episode 6, that last one. You can watch it from when we're going in. And I don't know if I 5 starts us hiking in there. But you can watch that whole thing, kind of look at the metal detector, see if you can catch a view of them and all that, how much of all this is in there. But you can follow through it. There is no film footage of us when we left. There's just some pictures we took coming back because we were all having a good time on the boat, kind of laughing because we got out of there. Storm's coming in behind us. But uh, that was it. So the story of the mess missing metal detectors or however we'll label that, all right? So thanks for joining Chasing Legends. Thanks for always. Hit subscribe. Leave a comment if you like. Um, hit the notifications thing so you can get a notification when we put and upload new episodes, okay? Thank you, everyone. Take care, and we will catch you next time on Chasing Legends.